It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Here we are in the midst of negotiations here. We are in the midst of negotiations here. Um, so far, Vaughn floated uh, $500 to the other two agitators to get them to just vote no, but not riot. She's trying something. She would like the police to be overly aggressive and thus damage the government and keep things going. Um, let's look at the rewards that are at stake for them. Agitators actually get 20000 but she's so far behind that she needs things to go longer and longer. Hopefully have a, a, a riot result down in the, in the future that, that makes everyone lose half their money. Since so she has the least money, everyone losing half is helpful to her um, because then she loses the least amount, uh, which is better for her. But right now she's going to... There's been riots every turn, so she's trying to have no riots so that maybe the government will think twice about um, uh, doing police action in the future, and then maybe she can make a riot happen. Uh, the slum dwellers are also not rioting. Um, they're just going to try to go forward. Flush and uh, Banana think that the, they have a strong enough board position that, you know, given another round, they can get all the developments they need, especially with all the money they have. Um, so they're going to just go try to forge ahead and get done right at the right at the buzzer, um, rather than drag the game on longer. So they're they're for going forward. Sonny also wants to go forward because you know he gets a good payoff payout there, thirty thousand, and then maybe he can stall on the next vote at least until he gets within spitting distance of winning. If we look at our um, urban sprawl players here, we see a lot of no votes. The people who are who are um, not winning, obviously. Uh, Stubby, he's voting for it. But right now, with these three no votes, that means that um, neither the government nor the nor business is going to be voting for this thing. Um, right now, Dancing Bear is trying to turn junior with with promise of a lot of money. Problem is, is he's got a lot of money, and he can get more because he's the treasurer. So... She's going to have to offer him quite a bit in order to turn him, or else her other option is to go for um, both Pinky and Giraffe. The reason why Junior is kind of more needed is because he can he can kind of swing the political vote since he gets two votes because he has two politicians under his belt. So that ne negotiation is still yet to happen, and that's going to continue. Oh, by the way, business. Um, uh, Dancing Bear, she wants to. She wants the boat to go forward, not because she gets much of a payout from it. She only gets ten thousand, I think. But she has like twice as much money as everyone else. So if she just races to the finish and gets the game done, she's got it in the bag, and she wins on the last. The last. Well, she does all right in the last. Yeah, she wins on the last vote as well. If yeah, the future city vote, she gets fifty thousand. I don't know if you can see that from here. So I'm going to complete the negotiations and then let you know what happens. Alrighty, Dancing Bear successfully bought off both Pinky and Giraffe. Took her two thousand dollars of her money, which is twenty of the Urban Sprawl money for Pinky, and just just a uh, thousand for Giraffe. Giraffe was, was like, okay. Um, so how the vote's going to turn out then is business is going to be voting for it. So that's four. Um, I think so. That's three against three. Government's actually going to be voting against but is going to do police action. So total of four, six, six plus police action is going to be our, um, our final total. And so that's going to go to, oh, this one. If total vote is, no, where's six in police action? No riot votes, one riot, and one I gotta find where six in police action is. I can't see it. One, two, three, four, or five. No riot votes in six or seven. Okay, so it did pass. It did pass. Didn't need the government at all. Um, that kind of backfired on on all the people. I, I'm not really giving this game the attention it needs, uh, but that's okay. Uh, it's it's fun to see how things go. So it's gonna pass. We're gonna go forward. There's riot control. I don't know what that's gonna do. Um, but we'll just know that the, the government has stronger riot control measures. Let's proceed with the game. It's going to be Hair Bear's turn. 
you'll be happy to know that Desi made it home to find a job offer in the mail, so he just works just down the street now, just right over here, which is really convenient. He can just go back and forth. So really what the Our Time players need to be doing is, is purchasing properties uh, collectively and then developing them. They, they have plenty of money. It shouldn't be hard. It seems like it's going to be smooth sailing until games end for Our, our Town players. Quick little update, um, Giraffe is ascendant. Look at her, she's way up here. Uh, Stubby's turn is next though, so he'll probably pull back ahead. Although Stubby's very low on money. He has five, so he'll be able to get another 10. Um, Hair Bear just went home, thought about maybe just going around buying properties, but he went home instead and got laid off work. So he's unemployed once more. This guy just can't keep a job. It's really tough, but I think the group probably has enough money that working isn't necessarily that important anymore. They keep getting payoffs, and so they have like, that's like thousands of dollars right there. After losing her coveted third place spot to Junior, she did get the contractor um, job thing, but um, not much going on in her turn. She wasn't even able to use it to destroy anything because she couldn't get the cards she needed. Um, and there wasn't just, just what was out there was not useful to her. So she she took a card that could have someone could have used to hurt her and then a couple of permits and that's it. And then she lost her political um, police chief to Junior after her turn's elections. So he now has three politicians in his pocket and Giraffe has two, leaving um, Stubby and Pinky without any. So if the next vote comes around, it's going to be largely controlled by these two. I mean, at least the government role. So taking a look at the board here, you'll see that our our town people have put out all the developments they need to be successful. So I don't know if I should even play their turns anymore. Um, I mean, there's obviously a flaw in the game design here on my part. Uh, but, you know, I guess the idea is to win. I think there's, there's the game's just supposed to stop for them at this point. I think... Yeah, as soon as you get 29, I'm pretty sure that triggers the end condition. And so, I guess, we'll make this a pass-fail, not go by points. Um, nah, I think they, they need to vote to end the game just like everyone else. So I'm going to have them keep playing and just roll and move around the board and, you know, just have them live their lives doing that. And that'll be a lot of fun for you to watch. You're welcome. I think what I'll do is make it kind of like a game of Pac-Man, where the paper boy, Smudge, is trying to catch um, the out, Our Town players, and if he catches them, he gets $100. And they can, you know, keep collecting salary from home. They're not really going to buy properties anymore. Um, the one thing is he can't get them if they are by a cooperatively owned location. So they're safe if they're there. So it's kind of like a game of tag, and that'll be kind of fun. Let's do that. Desi got his mail, so that means that um, that uh, Smudge, if you recall, I, this hasn't really come up, gets to decide which building this actually refers to. So this makes it so that he has to go to this building. Smudge is going to put him right here. So not only is Desi going to have to pay rent because they're not really buying properties anymore, um, but he is like set up for Smudge to get him. Now Smudge either needs to land on him or be a, in a, within a space of him. And then he gets a hundred Desi dollars. Unfortunately, Smudge rolled an eight, so he wasn't able to make it so that he could land by Desi. So his trap didn't work. So instead, he's going down to scare Banana down here. He's like, Grr. and I decided that you know each time he catches someone, he gets to double the amount that he gets. So the first time it's a hundred, next time it's two hundred. After having a turn similar to Pinky's, uh, Stubby just wasn't able to do anything, and. Giraffe has overtaken him in the points. She has more points than he does, and that's that's really given him an ulcer because he doesn't have a lot of politicians either. In fact, he doesn't have any. He doesn't have as many vocations, and the board is filling up, and while he is not in last place, it's very difficult to get rid of buildings. Um, the game should have, you know, uh, th this urban sprawl game would have been over after that last card, um, that last vote we did, but... We're not playing just o urban sprawl, so everyone needs to get used to that. It's going to be a little bit different, and we have to be able to adjust. So hopefully he can adjust. Our, our town players are playing it smart. They're clear across the board from Smudge, who only got a two on his roll, wasn't able to go very far. Banana was also smart, and part of his positioning, she, had to, she went a different way. So who's Smudge going to go for? Well, he went two spaces that way. 
Our Metropolis deck is getting low, so it's a good time for a check-in, because at any time the vote could come up, and who knows what will happen then. Um, first of all, our Urban Sprawl is very close with Stubby and Junior neck and neck at the, at the front there. Stubby was a bit ahead. No, maybe Junior was ahead. I forget. One of them was a bit ahead, but Junior did a big move, which pulled him really far ahead and pulled Stubby along with him. Uh, gave points, a lot of points for... Um, uh, having industrial things that that really made the divide widen between um, our leaders and the t the two people who are behind. Um, it's still anyone's game. A lot depends on. Whoops! I forgot to turn this over. On how the timing, how you know, uh, how the timing plays out with in terms of the game and versus where everyone's at. Giraffe actually, although she's in last place, and partially because she's in last place, she has a lot of power. Um, she has these three political offices, which are not because she's in last place, but she has the contractor card, which means with a city this full, she's gonna be pretty much the only one who can build. So she also has a lot of vocations, so she can make use of the vocations, maybe with this amusement park card, um, along with her contractor thing. She can knock someone else back, bring herself up, um, the trick is she's going to want to time it right so that um, she brings herself up as far as possible before she loses that contractor card. Now, a lot of that is, you know, you're gambling on what card comes up here. You don't know when the polls are going to happen. When voting happens, she, if she's ahead of anyone, she loses the card. But until then, you know, she could start to, to really score a lot. But again, we're close to the end, so she doesn't have a lot of time left. In terms of our, our town game of um, newspaper boy tag, um, no one's been caught yet. So, you know, you can see it's pretty, pretty tense. Here's uh, Smudge right here. He's really close to Hair Bear. However, being close isn't always useful because it's more likely you roll a seven, right? Then you roll a one, two, three, four. Four is not a very likely roll. So although it feels like he's gaining on him, he's really kind of a little bit far away. He's like three spaces away, like in all likelihood. It's time for an update. Uh, right now, Stubby is in, in the lead, though. It's about to be Junior's turn, so that could change. But really uh junior does have an urban renewal card which is one of those cards that gets rid of buildings so that's useful um i decided to make a new rule about the the um smudge chase just because it seems really difficult for him to catch anybody um and that is is he can just pass them he doesn't have to land on them he can pass them they're still safe if they're on these um these co-op owned buildings so uh, we'll see if that does anything to, to help him out because he, he needs to have a chance and right now he hasn't really had a chance if it's still some time passes and he still feels like it he can't get them even with that because he should get some I, I mean it's not like there's there's a lot of strategizing to what's going on with this um then I'll make it so that they don't get sucker by being in these um co-op owned places they did just get a, a big penalty for for owning so much of course you have to keep in mind normally this the game would be over for them um but they lost like three thousand eight hundred some dollars from their their community pot that was most of it most of what was there they had like all the 500s that were left several hundred dollar bills now they're just down to hundred dollar bills so i bet we could cash these out for a couple 500s right away smudge gets a 12 and he, he doesn't even have to use the new rule he lands right on hair bear hair bears in an intersection hair bear is going to lose a hundred dollars um he could have also gone for banana but he went for hair bear instead extra hundred for smudge i think for smudge to be successful he has to have as much money or more than the lowest player in terms of money so that's going to be really hard for him though i mean yeah, he just, he, papers don't pay that well. Junior ended his turn on top with scoring. That that doesn't count the end of game scoring, um, but he's gonna try to trigger the end of the game. Basically, he built a building and then he just took the other two because he had some AP left, that's action points, and he's hoping enough things will slide down that the, the end of game card will come and then he'll be able to work the end of the game. I'm not going to pre-calculate the end of the game because I'm playing like I don't know what those calculations are. Uh, neither do the players, and that's actually true. So we'll just go legit like that and see what we got. Oh, okay. Well, there it was. He didn't have to do all that. So we are going to 
kick in next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament with perhaps our last negotiation. So we know that these fellows will probably want to end it, right? So that's going to make for positive votes for both the um, both the agitators and the slum, slum dwellers, but that's only going to be worth three. So that means that either, well, I think, God, this is kind of, yeah, so Dancing Bear will probably vote for it because she probably has the most money. I can't remember if money is even private in the city's game or not. Um, Chinky will probably vote against it, but what will our urban sprawl people do? We can maybe just talk this out without even having to go against it. Well, he's going to vote for it. Um, gosh, I think Stubby probably would too, but the political power is mainly with Giraffe still... That's enough votes for business that'll go forward. Four, three. Now, that is enough that even if Chinky votes police action, that it it's not going to that the vote's going to carry. So we'll have our final rewards, and I'll just you know I'll just go through and calculate everything and let you know who the winners are. We won't have another video. That that was easy enough. I don't think anyone you know it being the end can bribe anyone to change their mind. Now that, this is very different than how the city's game would normally be because normally these four, oh, I'm sorry, Sonny. I hope that's not an indication of how well you did. Um, these four would just be negotiating with each other, but we have this, this kind of like, this whole kind of tri-city thing ended up being this bottom up sort of thing where um, the people kind of ostensibly lower than you had a lot of control over what you could do. like these pesky our town developments couldn't be gotten rid of towards the end and you know they they were able to build and that would affect them but yeah I don't know there was there was some fun interplay that way but really the people at the very top were very much indebted to and kind of had to do what the people like just on the tier below them wanted and that was kind of it along the way so the game's essentially going to end at the same time because our very kind of bottom tier is satisfied, right? And also the very top of the top tier, and that's Dancing Bear, is satisfied. And then there's enough of a close count between Stubby and Junior that it's in their best interest to end the game. Because uh, even if, you know, one of them, their score is close enough that they're probably not going to, you know, whichever one drops on that board. And I think I might do their score against the average of scores. Um, they're not going to drop far enough that it's really going to hurt them. So better to go out at like around the same or go, you know, jump up a little bit than to try for the number one victory. And that to me is a more realistic way to play games. It's not, it, when you just have a winner take all system, it's just not a very interesting dynamic. It, I mean, it can still be interesting, but that's, I think oftentimes in spite of that, that's sort of like the easy way to get a sort of, um, exciting result, kind of like an action movie, but I don't think action movies are necessarily the, the most interesting movies. You know, you, you turn the pressure on so high that, you know, it's going to be really exciting, but is that really what's the most interesting? I think action movies and that kind of thing can be interesting, but I don't think it necessarily leads to that in majority of the time. We'll find out. Let me do some scoring. Well, that was really fun. Did you have fun? Because I certainly had fun. Let's find out how everyone else did in our game of Tri-City. So first of all, recall that this list originally was in order of highest to lowest points. Um, so Dancy Bear had like negative 40 or so, all the way down to Junior who had negative 600 something. All right, Dancing Bear won the... Um, the city's game portion pretty handily. I think she was kind of destined to win in a way just because of how it was set up. It's okay. Remember one of the major rules of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament is the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament is not fair. So now she has positive 369. That's huge. Her um, score was 410. Uh, so what I did was I, I, I averaged the, the final scores of each kind of segment of the game and then um, did some subtraction to find out how different they were from that average. So she did really well on that and let's go down to Chinky. Chinky lost 80 points, not too bad. He was, he was pretty high up in the first place. Down to Vaughn. 
Vaughn had a decent score, but she dropped down the most from the Tri-Cities people, and again, I think that was kind of destined. She started out with very little money, and it was hard for her to negotiate to, to get her kind of money areas just because of how the voting power was spread out. Um, so she, if, she had, if she didn't have such a good score, she would have gotten out. She, she lost 440 points, so dropped down a lot. But I'm glad she's still in the tournament because she's a great player. She did. She was probably. She was probably who I thought might win that careers game before that went south. And it would be sad that she, you know if the unfairness of the real people multi game solitaire mega tournament just like took her out right away. So I'm glad she gets another shot. Though with a score like that, she probably only gets one more shot. Uh, let's move down to Pinky. Pinky did. She ended up in, um, so this is, this is part of the Urban Sprawl game. She got last place in that, negative 290, but again, she had a high enough score that that wasn't enough to take her out. Smudge did get a positive score. Um, he had more money than Flush did at the end of the game, so I took just the, the difference there, um, added it to his, to his score, and he's got the second highest score right now. Uh, second only to Dancing Bear, who has 369. Um, the rest of the uh, Our Town people, um, I just had to be pass fail. So they're all just staying at the score they, they're at, which isn't bad. You know, they got through a game and they they didn't go down, uh, which is more than most can say. Um, going down to Giraffe. Where's Giraffe? Actually, I'll just go down the list. Hair Bear stays the same. Banana stays the same. Desi stays the same. Cowboy wasn't playing. Giraffe, she um, got second place. Because of her political titles, those gave her some points at the end based on what was on the map. So she got a positive 90, which, you know, from where she was, that, that, that couldn't do anything but help. Um, Stubby, he got second to last place, but only negative 40. So what we saw with kind of the averaging I did was that the person in first and the person in last kind of got big jumps uh, in either direction. And the people in the middle just kind of got a little piddly. Um, stories of success down here. Sunny, Flush, Junior. These were the three that that were just on the brink of getting eliminated for the from the tournament. Sunny, he ended up with a positive score of 40, so that that holds him on a little bit longer. He's still close to the brink. Um, Flush got that pass. He was one one of the our town players, so it was a pass fail kind of thing. So he gets to continue on, still on the brink though. Um, and then Junior, he got a, a substantial bonus. He was their first player in um, Urban Sprawl, got 260 points added to his score, which he desperately needed because he was our lowest scorer. You see him down here. So um, no one was eliminated. No one was eliminated. It was, uh, it was an interesting exercise. It did change things, and it'll probably change things later, next time. Not Probably not next time, but sometime after next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament English Leg.